Hello, having looked at objects and classes, let's now talk about instantiation, which is a key concept in object-oriented programming. So, to be honest, it's just really a fancy word for creating an object. So instantiation is creating an instance of a class. Right, I've got uh, instant, instance, we're making a particular implementation of our class, which is what an object is, right? We've got our template, which is our class, we create it by giving it values and it becomes an object. And so instantiation is us doing that process. So for this video, let me use an example of trains. So I've got a train class. I've got currently one field and I've got two methods. But just as a class, it's not very useful to us. It's only really useful once I make an object, once I instantiate an object. So this is how I'm doing it in my pseudocode. It's how it typically looks, varies language to language. We have our object on the left hand side. It's, it can be a variable, it can be more of a reference depending on the language. And on the right hand side, we usually have the code to construct it. Often we're, well, we're telling it what the class is called and maybe a keyword like new is used to actually instantiate it. And once we have the object instantiated, we can actually use this object name, like I say, either just the identifier or the reference, whatever it is, to access the properties held inside it. In most languages, if you just try to say print or output train one as an object, you would see nothing useful. Instead, you've actually got a user. And so usually this means we put the object name followed by a dot and followed by either our field name or the method name. So if I'm, once I've instantiated it, if I'm going out, put train one dot doors opened, this should print false because doors opened is set to false inside my class. And so therefore it tracks to be set to false in my object too. If I then call open doors on train one, because it's a method, you've got to do it on the object. It can't just be open doors on its own. It's got to be applied to this object. Well, that wouldn't do anything apart from behind the scenes, change doors open to be true. And so therefore, if I run the same bit of code again and just output this field, I get true this time. So the key message is once you've instantiated an object to actually use it and get access to the code inside the class, I've got to apply the field name or the method name to the object name. Now, if you kind of know this already and have coded code like this in an object-oriented language before, you might be eyeing this pseudocode with suspicion because often it looks a bit more like this this being the operative word. So spot the difference between previous slide to this slide. And then this slide, I've stuck the word this before my field and also put it in my methods as well. So often, and in most cases I've come across, the language will use a keyword like this or also self is used. And that keyword is used to refer to this particular instance of this class. Now it gets confusing at this point sometimes, I think, because it almost seems unnecessary. And in some cases it is unnecessary, but once you bring in static methods and static attributes, it becomes more, more important. Because without this keyword telling you or telling the language more to the point which object it belongs to, it might think you're applying this to all objects of the class. If we just had doors opened being set to false, well, does that just apply to this one object? does it apply to every object from the train class? It's not clear. And so this makes it clear that this is a unique value for this particular object. Another object can have a completely different value and that would be absolutely fine. So in terms of how this affects our main code, so this is our kind of main program, this is our class definition, it doesn't affect it at all. It looks exactly the same. The use of the keyword this or self happens inside the class. We can maybe start to see what's going on a little bit if we look at the main code though. So train one dot doors opened. Well, the corresponding code is this dot doors opened. And so it knows it's this current instance of train we're looking at, not another object. And with our methods, it's a bit murkier because we've got no arguments in the open door call here, but yet I've got a parameter in my open doors subroutine, which is confusing. Now, usually what's going on is a reference to the object is passed in when we call it like this. So really, train one dot open doors, in effect is train one dot open doors train one in the brackets. So I like to think of it as a secret first argument. Secretly, a reference to the object, it might just be a pointer to where it's located, is passed in as an argument to our methods. And so therefore, this is really being replaced with train one when it's calling this subroutine. So train one dot doors open is set to true. We're changing this instance, not any other object. 
A bit confusing, it might make more sense when we look at static attributes a bit later on. But for now, focusing on constructors, because when I instantiate an object, the programming language will call a special subroutine called a constructor to actually create it. Now in examples I've shown so far, this was implicit, so done for me, done behind the scenes somehow, we don't really care, but it can also be explicit. You, as a programmer, can write your own constructor subroutine to run when you instantiate objects of that class. So you can define it inside your class as a special kind of method. Often the name of this will just be the class name. It might also be a funny language name like init in Python. It depends on the approach. But it's a method inside your class alongside your other methods. So to differentiate it occasionally, this will be um, something like open doors would be called an instance method whereas the constructor is just called the constructor because there are two different types of methods. Now, when you instantiate an object, the constructor gets called first, so it'll always be the first bit of code which gets run. And so therefore, a common use of it is to initialize the fields during instantiation. So doors opened, I've moved from the top into this constructor. I've decided I wanna keep the doors open set to be false by default, but the start and end point of my train, where it begins and where it terminates, I might want to set in my main program because it's going to vary depending on the object I'm making. If I've got 50 trains in my fleet, I want to be able to set the start and end point for each train individually because they're going to vary quite a bit. And so if I had main code like this, I can start to make use of my constructor. The first two lines are me instantiating two objects, train one and train two. Unlike the example at the top of the screen, this time the brackets I've supplied arguments to. So my first train, I've supplied Aldgate and Uxbridge as arguments to this. Now, I, tell, I mentioned before that this is sort of like a secret first argument. So we ignore that. Aldgate is really matching up to the start parameter and Uxbridge is matching up to the end parameter. For train one, doors open and set to false, like every instance. But its version of start is set to Aldgate. Its version of end is set to Uxbridge. Whereas train two has got its start set to Stanmore and its end set to Stratford. That's where the reasoning behind this maybe starts to become clear because in this bit of code, I've got two examples of start, two examples of end currently active. One pair belongs to train one, one pair belongs to train two. And so this enables you to pinpoint which one exactly you're referring to. Now just to see what this is doing, if I then output train1.start, I should get Aldgate. If I output train2.start, I get Stanmore because the this is telling it which one it actually is. And the last point, if I'm outputting both doors opened, well, these should be exactly the same because both were hard-coded to be false. So I'm showing you this particular sequence because it's fine to initialize values to be the same across every object, but equally it's fine to set varying attributes using the constructor and you just pass in those values when you instantiate the object in your main program.